Mappin, Matt, Mappin, Matt. Hello, welcome to the Fantasy Fair, the most magical podcast. <laughs> <on Earth>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kyle. <laughs> I'm Kyle Lira. And welcome to Once Upon a Retrospect, where we take a look back at all your favorite Disney movies. We are continuing with Muppet Month in December. <laughs> Whoops. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. To be honest, we were busy and didn't um in November. So, we didn't uh, really have so. a lot planned for December anyways. <laughs> okay, so we're bleeding this thing into the ground and uh look no further than Muppets the Great Muppet Caper and Muppets Take Manhattan and we're going to be covering both of those movies today on this episode uh yeah um a couple of uh of uh Disney notes um well just one um before we begin disney uh disney news i mean disney bought them out so it's technically disney so um so we have the death of uh of uh, david prouse that i would like to say um he is the the figure behind darth vader that you see in the original trilogy he is the hulking figure that you see take on uh, mark hamill and alec guinness and everything like that and he like he embodied Darth Vader. He he like he's one of like the first you know he is the first villain in Star Wars. Um, he only had ten minutes of screen time in the first movie, but boy, he made a splash in the other ones. Uh, and he will go by you know usually you know as Darth Vader as James Earl Jones, but let's not forget the man who was you know who did the physical acting of Darth Vader, and that is David Prowse. So, um, rest in peace, David. Um, you, uh, you, you literally embodied a huge icon in film history, literally, and no one can take that away because, let's say it, you helped Darth Vader be menacing. And I think that is, uh, that is an incredible feat. Any words on, uh, David Prowse before we continue on it's continuously distressing and disconcerting to have so many people just literally drop dead um it it, it has been a depressing year it has been a honestly a sad year and every year we have these <laughs> big celebrity or well-known industry people pass away um but he lived a good long life 85 years of age um Happy for that life and to celebrate it and uh, one whose accomplishment will never erase from our minds and our memories. He in, inhabited a character that will never be forgotten. And I think really that will be his legacy and a damn fine legacy if there ever was one for that. So uh, sad to hear the news, sad to, to lose yet another of the original cast. But mm -hmm. all the things you said, uh, right on, Kyle. Uh, rest in peace. Have some peace. I saw this picture. Um, it was like everybody from the original cast with only uh, Mark Hamill. Um, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, no, Harrison Peter Ford, Mayhew, Kenny and... Baker, and uh, David Prowse. They're, they were all, like, I mean, everybody was there, but, like, every like they pointed out, like, those who had passed away. Oh, my goodness. That's so yeah. many. <laughs> all in the last five years. I know. Honestly. All in the last five years, it was Kenny Baker, Carrie Fisher, then Peter Mayhew, and then David Prowse. Mm hmm I blame The Last Jedi. <laughs> Oh, no, and you know God. what? Like, I feel like people will actually believe that too. So it's like jokes, but not jokes because people are kind yeah. of be stupid sometimes. No, literally, I can. Oh my God, I can already hear them being like, the disappointment of The Last Jedi is what uh, ruined them, or I don't know, something stupid. Right, right. Let's. 
That, that's yeah, that's how it be sometimes. Ruin Johnson you know, killed the Star Wars <laughs> family. I don't know. Whatever it would be. Jeez. Yeah, I don't. Don't worry, the fan base did that themselves. Um, the you have done that yourself. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it is. Very, it's very sad. Um, and you know, I was just like, I was casually just watching a New Hope the other day, you know, and it was just, it, it was, it was, uh, it was disheartening to to hear that news. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the reason, <laughs> because like I was going Gaga and ballistic over um over uh seeing a young Carrie Fisher in Rogue One. Who you think? And, yeah, <laughs> I think I think it's me. I think it's me, guys. If you want to send all the hate towards me, I think yeah, um. Because, like, I watch Star Wars and Star Wars-related content right relatively close to the the event. So, if any hate goes to any particular person, don't throw it at Ryan Johnson. Probably throw it to me, because I think I'm a, I'm a pariah when it comes to the, these kind of things. So, what am I going to do? Uh, <laughs> so, let's get out of the darkness. And into the sun, I won't forget all the ones that I love. And I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change, and break away with the... <laughs> hey, a movie. Let's... Let, no, okay, we're not doing that. <laughs> My friends are cringing so hard. Like, I've never seen them cringe <laughs> I'm like, so... Yeah, I'm like, reaction <laughs> he's literally biting his nails or something <laughs> not even his, he's his just fingers like, he's like <laughs> he's just like biting hard to make sure he doesn't say anything i don't blame you alexis you know alexis soto if you want to quit right spot entertainment just because of that that's because you see like it, it it's not just me watching star wars things it's just me talking that that makes everything wither and die but that's okay cuz we're all here um to talk about the great mukbe keeper that was not a segue at all <laughs> <laughs> so here we so here we are <laughs> this episode is going well guys <laughs> i haven't even spoken yet and this is ever <laughs> I'm just doing it all myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, great Muppet Caper. Let's talk. Uh, oh, do you uh, guys have any other things you want to add before we begin the podcast? Mm. Oh. As far as Disney news is concerned, or anything, yeah. How you guys been? What's up? Mm. How was your guys' <laughs> Thanksgiving? <laughs> we, I ate and I got drunk. It's all good. Alexis? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get drunk. I didn't get drunk. Uh, oh. <laughs> but I ate, oh, and it was fun. I, you know? So, yeah, I ate. I so, had to go to bed early. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, we oh, watched a sorry. Christmas movie with my oh, family. Christmas movie? Uh, for some reason, Is my dad, that? he was like, oh, we should watch like a movie after we eat. And then he like really wanted to watch a Christmas movie, which is really weird. Which Christmas? Uh, Don't tell me it's that demonic Satan. No, uh, Satan, <laughs> um, Santa no. shit. Um, it was uh, the Santa Chronicles. Is that what it's called? The one on Netflix. Oh, with the Kurt Russell. Yeah, because he really likes stuff. Kurt okay. Russell, so we watched it. Uh, Apparently, Walt Disney does too. I know. I told them that, and they were like, "What?" Which is super weird because I found that out the same day they did. But whatever. Um. But, yeah, we watched it. It's pretty good. Like, it's really funny. Uh, we didn't watch the second one, though, because he wanted to wait. <laughs> um, and then I watched Freaky Friday afterwards. <laughs> ah, I see. Um, yeah, you're the ultimate, yeah. Honestly, like, if we're talking about, like, remakes, that is better than the original. Oh, my God, Freaky like... Friday. I Oh my god, are you kidding me? It's like, she's everything I wanted to be. <laughs> also, you know, it's so weird, like, both 
Lindsay Lohan remakes are better than the original. Like, sorry, Haley Mills, but like, the Parent Trap is the <laughs> Lindsay Lohan better uh, Parent Trap That's is really better than the too. original. Um, and then what else? I had to go to bed early because you know Black Friday. But yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Black Friday. How was that? It wasn't too bad. It was it felt like a normal day only because we control how many how many people go inside of the store. Oh, um nice. so that was nice. Um But yeah, like it, it it wasn't too bad. It wasn't crazy. It actually felt like super slow just because of how many people we had in the store. Because usually you're like running around everywhere at all times. And this time mm-hmm. I had to be in one spot the whole time. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Ain't, ain't retail fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I got drunk for the both of us. So don't worry, guys. You guys are covered. <laughs> um, because <laughs> in my uh, in my industry, um, <laughs> in my industry, <laughs> do they open your work? No, no. Oh, okay, that's good. I I thought they did, and they just gave me the day off. <laughs> no, because like people like they cook anyway. So like, what's the point of like keeping it open? Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm just speaking on a, like a capitalistic value lens thing. Uh, so that's the whole reason. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> Great Muppet Caper. Let's begin. Um, we like to start off every podcast twelve minutes in, twelve minutes and thirty minutes seconds in. Uh. With discussing the introductions to said movies. Uh, so I'm going to start with the Alexis's because I assume it is, although you know what they say about assumptions, uh, I assume the their stories are going to be relatively short. So I'm going to let them uh, take the floor first. Uh, who wants to, you know what, ladies first? Are we, are we Moreno. doing both at the same time or just one of or just caper right now. Oh, we'll just do caper right now, and then we'll go on to um to Manhattan. Um, so yeah, I watched it for the first time, <laughs> as I will for these <laughs> next coming up <laughs> movies. Um, but okay, I do have to say that this intro might be one of my favorite intros or start to a movie ever. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was I was cracking up <laughs> the whole time. It was so good. Um, I I don't know. I just like I don't know why I never like got into them. I mean, I feel like I'm, this is what I'm going to be saying the whole time because I feel like they're so funny and it's so random. <laughs> and but <laughs> also <know>. like <laughs> like uh. The times that the movies come out are so like, uh, like it it dates the movies, but in a good way. Like it shows yeah. the good parts of whatever era the movies came out. Um, right. So that's something that I noticed that with this one, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but no, I I had a good time. I laughed a lot. It was great. Alexis Soto. Yeah, uh, very much in line with uh, with Alexis. This is my first time. Uh, well, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. I don't know what what it was uh, when you were asking what I was uh, doing on Thanksgiving. Everybody was going crazy over Ahsoka Tano. So oh, you know, yeah. we were all hem- our brains were hemorrhaging on the floor. So as as long was with the, with the whole internet. Mm. So because that that happened that night, right? We'll talk about that bit. We'll talk about that. Oh, That's a tease Jesus. for the Mandalorian, <laughs> for the fantasy fair. Not, 
Not yet. Uh, we'll have a, a Mandalorian review. Yeah, uh, that's what I meant. Re- down the line. Review. Down the line yeah. when it's over next month. Or this month, actually. Shit. I for- yeah. forget what month I'm it's in. It's almost over. We we have, like, what? Like, three episodes left? It feels like a lifetime. <laughs> anyway. So, like I mentioned previously, I had not seen most of the Muppet movies. Uh, and so this is my first time watching through uh, all of them. And this one kind of, um, maybe more so than the Muppet movie, got me right away. Yeah, uh, Alexis is so correct when she says that that opening was just beyond entertaining and hilarious. And I don't know how, I never really know how to um, categorize or classify certain like subgenres of comedy, like what it falls into. <laughs> Kyle, that's more your thing. But whatever the Muppets is, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it it's, never... like, it's like not breaking the whatever number of wall it is, the but like wall. it's very like self aware, but yeah. like not in like a in your face type of way. I don't know. It's just it, I thought it was so good. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, it's 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 such a good. Uh, introduction to what this is going to be uh and then you kind of get a sense of for like uh, all right so this is the great muppet caper it's about these like reporters and now they're going to go find off uh on some hopeless adventure of some sort because like good god i mean kermit Fozzie, and gonzo are kind of hopeless um <laughs> yeah <laughs> all from the beginning and you know you know that's gonna go somewhere um that's only gonna be so much fun but yeah with the opening number hey a movie with kyle was singing you know before we uh started recording and we were listening to it's i mean that's what helps these movies right it's like they they also have such great catchy songs that throw you in the help kind of throw you into what this is going to be and it it's not just the song obviously it's just it's so crazy there's a lot of you know I think it takes place like in a Hollywood roadway, and then like there's a whole there's like it's a massive set of mm-hmm. people going back and forth, and yeah, like everything it, to make the comedy and like the comedic timing go well in that intro. I'll get into my backstory later. Um, like it had to go one hundred percent the right way, otherwise it, the comedy would fucking fall flat but just because like everything was you know seemingly going wrong you know in this like choreographed chaos that was going on in the intro and plus like the the just the title alone hey it's a movie <laughs> <laughs> you know just the title <laughs> what's the the title credits <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey what's that and like <laughs> who is that who is that person? <laughs> and you're asking the wrong person. They have families. <laughs> they have families. <laughs> That's brilliant, though, because in those times, every movie had a certain <laughs> kind of opening credits. And, like, if this is like, going to be a kid's movie. That's what kids are going to be wondering. Like, who the, who the hell are these people? Why, why are they, like, names they scrolling? Why are they... Well, that's what, like, even, like, like with, like, Disney movies... Like the like Snow White, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, like the opening sequence of like all those movies are like the title credits. They were so yeah. fucking long. <laughs> but hey, you get good music out of it. Yes. But I don't think that that goes up to the uh, alley of like of children's entertainment. <laughs> um, even with concept art in the yeah. back and what I mean that, but the thing totally is- goes overlooked. At least you know if like when you're kids. Now you can kind of be like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Like how we are today. <laughs> like when, like when Fozzie, he's like, what's a PGA? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have no idea of Fozzie. <laughs> and they just keep on floating until the freaking thing crashes to the freaking set, you know? And like the whole thing when he's like, you know, in this movie, we're gonna be <laughs> like pretty much describing the entire plot. Yeah. And... Oh, and by the way, I love how Sweetums constantly gets the short end of the stick, and constantly, like every time he wants to join a Muppets thing, 
he constantly gets shorts. So, uh, just to clarify, the, Kyle, uh, so I am picture it. Sweetums is the big guy, right? The big guy, yeah. The big guy. And he right. falls down a freaking sewer shaft. <laughs> yeah, because in the last movie, he spent the whole movie trying to catch up to the car. <laughs> Yeah, they left him at the. At, remember at the at the. I think it was a, a car sale shop or whatever, and he kept trying to run after the damn thing, and he only got there until like the the last number of the movie. I think. <laughs> That's one of the best things about like okay, like we go to like Muppet Vision, <clears throat> right? Um, the whole thing was that he Sweetums was trying to be a part of the show, um, even physically coming out uh in the muppet vision i don't know if you've seen it Alexa. i have i think we all have at one point i just it's been so long i don't remember it i, I just go on okay. youtube and watch it again sweetums physically comes out and he's like you know are we gonna start and everything and he's <laughs> like constantly trying to be involved in no. the show but he constantly gets back shafted <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like i want to join you know kind of thing um big friendly giant you know it should be a movie or a book. I don't know. Either which. Um, but uh, they're like the whole sarcasm, like the self-aware sarcasm that it has that, uh, that Moreno pointed out earlier is so on point with this movie, even to the point where we get to freaking Oscar the Grouch. And he's like, what are you doing here? Very minimal cameo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just it being like that. Oh, by the way, like how... Like, cause like the big numbers were dramatic, but so dramatic and so like well choreographed that it was beyond goofy mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. So it added a little flavor to the comedy as well. Um, this was the last, uh, fun fact before we, before I go into my story, this was the last movie that, uh, that was in continuation with when the show was on air. Like, oh. like two months um, after the uh, release, the uh, Muppet show would um, cease to cease to be. It wouldn't, um, and it would go into syndication like three years later and just like replay everything. But um, this was the last time that like, the Muppets were both synony synonymously on TV and, um, and doing their, doing their on-screen um, shit. So, right. Um, this movie, I, I've forgotten much about it. I've, I remember seeing it on the Disney channel, <laughs> you know? Um, and, the only scene that I like remember like spot on was when Kermit was getting ready for his date. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that was the, like the, I, I only had like vague memories of seeing that scene. And I thought that was from a different movie. Um, and I was like, okay, all right. All right. But looking back at great Muppet caper, I'm going to have to say that I love caper more than manhattan yeah i i really like this one you know it it's, it's i think we're gonna fall on the same lines here uh and i wasn't expecting that to be the case if you had asked me beforehand um i mean we'll talk about take manhattan and we'll also talk about as we've already discussed about the first muppet movie the the muppet movie but it's interesting because i i i really Honestly, love this one, Muppet Caper. It mm -hmm. was really up my alley. It was so entertaining and honestly, exactly what I would want a Muppet movie to be. And it was interesting because I usually when I when I uh, revisit old films that I, and I, I that I'm discovering for the first time, I want to see how they were received in their time. I'm always very mm -hmm. curious to see that because uh, there are so many movies that uh you know like empire strikes back or mm -hmm. the shining that had very mixed reactions when they came out and now are like classics so yeah. i went back and saw uh you know some reviews and overall this got very mixed reviews uh roger ebert was like kind of gave this one the cold shoulder saying that it was like a shell of the first movie it, it <laughs> had no that it had no charm to it i and like, I'm like this one what? i mean out of the three that we've seen i like this one the most i agree i agree wholeheartedly and that's not what i was expecting it to be um but i i it felt like this one 
they kind of just let it rip and didn't give a shit. Like, you know, it, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, you had the dramatic flair of, oh, Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have to say, uh, I had such a great time watching this movie. It really did um, lift my spirits in so many ways. And it, I mean, it, as we're going to be mentioning, it is uh, consistently entertaining. And then also, you know, it also has what every Muppet movie, every good Muppet movie should have. And that is like the just... The earnestness of these Muppet characters, you just automatically root for them and are like in the palm of their puppet hands, whatever they are. Um, they there's so many wonderful lines mm-hmm. and gags. Like when I they, think my favorite they, one was um, when they're exploring London on the tour bus or the, the <laughs> double decker bus, <laughs> and um, they take a picture and he's like, "Oh, my elbow," is sh-, or it's like was in the shot and he's like it's okay it gives it human character and he's like i'm a bear <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's so many wonderful ones right like when uh so they get they're about to get to the des- their, their destination and they can't land so they're thrown out of the plane <laughs> then the next thing they're it's even funny when they're thrown out of the bus <laughs> um yeah then to get to that like really awful hotel <laughs> the happiness, the happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like you know just because it's stupid humor right yeah so it's like you know if this is the happiness hotel i don't want to see what's it's... the sad hotel <laughs> it's so stupid and like non sequitur it's just amazing but like the way that uh, they deliver the lines like it's so like serious i don't know i just i think i like this type of humor where it just like comes out naturally like without even yeah. or it does it feel like it's trying too hard but like it is at the same time i don't know like the played straight kind of yeah. humor kind of thing like i love this scene between piggy and kermit and uh i love when they were like um where he was like what oh she was like piggy what are you what are you what are you doing i don't know i thought it would give him more dramatic uh dramatic license <laughs> and then they continue like talking about like Kermit was giving Piggy notes and Piggy was giving Kermit yeah. notes. Like, you know, I think you were dry on that uh, <laughs> delivery. And he was like, I think, you know, I think I'll, in the I'll middle of the movie, the, right yeah, that, that, that was <laughs> the funny part. In the middle of the movie, they're like, it's it, it's like, all right, take five. Let's get let's trade some notes on like what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Or the guy they meet on the bench, like he meets on the bench, and he was like, "I know exactly oh, yeah, what happened." That's so <laughs> random. <laughs> but and and he was how, like, like he lets him talk, and at the end, he's like, "It's amazing how you were so wrong." <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, one hundred percent of what you said was just wrong. <laughs> and he was like, "So you do know what I feel like?" No. <laughs> And one of the ones that was like, I, it, it was so funny because of how um, the people were reacting in the house. But there was this whole bit where Piggy is literally trying to break into a house, <laughs> and then yeah. the, remember that. And then like the, and then they do nothing about it. And like this, I don't know how, how distracted the husband is. It, it, it oh, was, by the way, that husband. My Monty Python loving oh heart God. went wild. That was John Cleese. <laughs> that was um, John Cleese. <laughs> that was John Cleese. Yeah, you know. It took my, him thirty yeah, minutes my... to realize there was a pig in the house. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Is that a pig in the house?" <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's talking to his wife and saying that. Oh, my day was utmost boring. <laughs> How about yours? Yes, yes. Mine was boring as well, John. Oh my god, that was so funny. Oh, when, when Piggy is like climbing up the freaking walls, <laughs> and he's like, next time the pig is getting a stunt double. A stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she look into the camera and say that? It almost felt that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what this movie is. Like, yeah. it had that kind of charm to it, you know? Um, the constant, like, breaking of the fourth 
fifth, sixth, whatever number of wall you're breaking. Because let's face it, that fourth wall was broken the minute they said, hey, a movie. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so we're in like the ninth, tenth wall at this point. Um, it's just, it, it's just an, like, how, oh, also, my James Bond loving heart. Um, love the fact that um, this movie had to Dame- take place in London, didn't it? I know. Yeah. Literally, I was like, "Oh, this is why we're watching this movie." <laughs> <laughs> um, Dame Diana Rigg. <laughs> um, also known as to some, she is known as a uh, uh, Lady Tyrell in Game of Thrones, but to me, she's Teresa Bond in uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. And like, yes, give me more Diana Rigg. She was like wonderful. Like I remember when um there was a scene when she's like uh Miss Piggy is uh in the interview with her, and she's like uh e- explaining why her brother is like the utmost piece of trash that you ever seen. Yeah. And she was like, "Why are you telling me all this? It's called plot." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wait a minute. So like, I did- that was Diana Rigg. That was Diana Rigg, yeah. I did not know that. I didn't yeah. catch. I mean, there was a familiarity to her, but I could, it, I could. The movie honestly doesn't feel like it was that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't catch that. I did not catch so that. The person that uh, so Piggy is trying to um, get a job for this fashionista. That's Diana Rigg. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, also when uh also when uh um when Piggy is in jail in the last bit, she was like, you know, it's what you get when you're in the slammer. The slammer? Yeah, it's what we call mm-hmm. in, it's what we call the big house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um the, yeah, this movie is full of freaking non sequiturs that I think is utterly delightful and just them being kicked out of the freaking plane at the end and it's just them them descending from the from the sky and singing the song the final mm-hmm. song ooh um my favorite lavishly done um music number was uh, miss piggy's fantasy um <laughs> oh my god man that i when that moment happened i was like it wasn't until it got to like th- like this lavish swimming pool and everyone doing like a swimming number that I caught. Okay, this is a fantasy. Because yeah. at first, what happens is like she walks out uh, and then like she's modeling and everything. And then like everyone just like this enormous ovation that happens. And I thought to myself, look, the movie is so silly enough that I could buy that happening like for reals. That, mm-hmm. all right, this is what was supposed to happen. This is what it is. And then it wasn't. Yeah. But I mean, it was an amazing sequence. Uh, that whole piggy sequence. And then it was like, it ended with her in a fucking pond. I think it was a pond, right? Yeah. Or like a uh, fountain. Yeah, like a fountain. Uh, yeah, and it was like, well, damn, that was fun. But now that did somebody push her? Did she fall in? I guess like she fell in during the whole like getting lost in her whole fantasy thing that she just falls in. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um the whole way that they were trying to get into the um the the Mallory Gallery. <laughs> this is the name. <laughs> Animal, can you eat this? <laughs> ah <laughs> And the dogs. Uh, I was like, hold on, I'll try. And then Rolf the dog was like, bark, 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 <laughs> bark. <laughs> and the dogs immediately just like calm down. <laughs> and he's like, it helps to know a second language. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love this movie. I really do. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't, I don't remember that, but that's funny. <laughs> it is so funny. <laughs> oh, I also love how, like, during in the beginning of Hey, a movie, I love that when um you're watching um uh because Gonzo he's supposed to be like the great you know investigative photographer mm-hmm. and all that shit, 
while all the chaos was going on and literally in the middle of a crime scene, he's taking a picture of a fucking chicken. <laughs> like, hold on, I found your good side. <laughs> For the whole thing, I mean, what was going in that opening sequence? There was a fucking crime thing going on and everything, and then they're like, they're doing a story about themselves joining the paper. Yeah, and he, oh, by the way, there was another uh, gag where like, um, when Kermit and Fozzie open their mouth, they look alike, and they're oh, passing yeah, themselves yeah. off as twins. Um, he's like, wait, which one said it? It was me. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't oh tell God. the difference. Ooh, also like there was a, a a joke that was like, oh wow, um, never expected that in a Muppet movie where uh you, to pay off dinner, um, Gonzo was taking pictures of all the people and like charging guy? them for like, yeah, and then he was like, scream! I don't want people to know that. He, come on, I'm pretty sure your wife would want him. My wife is at home. And then the Gonzo was like, okay, um, we're going over here. <laughs> like, yikes. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's all in good laughs. It's all it's all good fun. Um Yeah. Uh, we could go on and on and if we're you know, honestly, like if we were to do one audio commentary for the Muppets, I would pick a uh, great Muppet Caper to do. That would be fun. Uh, Although yeah, it, it just... may be one of those where we're just like spending the entire time laughing at it, um, than yeah. really saying much about it. One of my uh, personal favorite sequences of the movie was because um, I just thought it was like really like you know it was fun and everything, but it was also just like a really wonderful dance number. Uh, was in the where everybody's at the at dinner. Oh yeah. Uh, so then I think uh, it starts off with Kermit and Piggy dancing, and it's the song the first time it happens. Mm-hmm. I really love that song. I was like, that's a really good. And I think I, I read that it was nominated for best original song at the Academy Awards. And it, did it win? No. And it didn't win. Of no, course. it didn't. No, I, I, my favorite was when Kermit is getting ready. Oh, um, I really like that one. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Um, when, what's his name? The bear guy. He's like, Fozzie. You Fozzie. don't want me to go. <laughs> Oh my god! Was... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought that was, like, was really catchy. And he's like, "Okay, you could go." And then he opens the door. Can you go. hear that? We're going. <laughs> <laughs> like the almost like wow. Um, also, like the whole entire van, a uh, bus that they have is oh, yeah. pretty freaking hilarious. <laughs> it's they pretty much like made. A... Oh, by the way, speaking of like um like little details. To get all the Muppets to freaking ride a bike in that one sequence, like, goodness gracious, some great puppetry going on in in that moment. Like, sometimes you forget because, like, we're, we're so accustomed to, like, the age of, like, erasing things, you, you know, with, you know, computers. And you often forget that they didn't have that kind of luxury back then. They kind of had to just, like, wing it on the spot. And for them to like, cause like it was such a hassle to film Kermit on the bike in the first mm-hmm. movie that they were like, how are you going to like amplify that this time? <laughs> let's do and, everybody on the bike. <laughs> yeah. Let's throw every single Muppet that we have at our disposal on a bike and just call it like that. And honestly, like. I was just blown away. And also, it's such a good song, Together, Together, We Ride. It's such a like a, a nice, profound song. And honestly, one of the best Muppet songs, period. Um, because of how like tranquil it is and how you like associate tranquility with Muppets. You know, it, it is funny, like as we could clearly see in this movie. But the fact that you get like that little bit of like, you know, tranquility after, after you know, all our heroes seem to be down and out of their luck. And you have a nice little little moment like that. Also, them trying to get the baseball diamond is pretty funny as well. <laughs> I love that it I just mean, ends in like kind of a spy movie type of... <laughs> or like a... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a heist yeah, movie. Yeah. So funny. I don't know. I really, I really enjoyed this movie. Ooh, a... Uh, uh, Fozzie's pep talk when he's like, "You don't want the bad guys to win." 
<laughs> and they're just like, no. And when they were counting the, like, the weapons that they had at their oh, disposal yeah. as well, and they were like, you know, um, they're like a radar, uh, radar, uh, radar gun. And he was like, check. He was like, uh, whoopee cushion, check. It has holes. <laughs> And he's like, uh, and he's like, uh, ooh, mouse trap. He's like, I forgot to get it. <laughs> and they were like vastly underprepared for it. <laughs> um, but it's it's Muppets. It's it's the Muppet way, you know. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, we'll get to that conversation uh, much later. Uh, yeah. So, uh, anything else you want to say about? A uh, great Muppet caper before we go on to uh, Muppets Take Manhattan. No, I don't think so. I think that pretty much said it all. It, it is so entertaining, so hilarious, and uh, would actually go back and watch this a lot. This mm-hmm. is so much fun. Yeah, um, I love. I I absolutely love it. It's, it immediately became like one of my favorite like. Not only Muppet movies, but favorite comedies of all time because, like, the com- the comedic timing was so perfect in this movie. Like, there's not one joke that doesn't land in this movie. And honestly, I think that's an incredible feat. And to like add that with like Muppet Muppet um uh Muppetness, I think that adds another level of of uh of greatness. So, uh, let's talk uh, Muppets Take Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> what's your guys' stories? <laughs> Gee, I wonder what. <laughs> I, Go back, I wonder uh, what too. Twenty minutes. <laughs> um, I mean the same thing. I watched it for the first time. Yeah. Um, it was it was good. I there's a lot of people in it, like. <laughs> And I actually yeah. knew the people this time, so that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that yeah. person. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's a good time. I think I don't know. I just think that I like the other one better. <laughs> yeah, this one. I, I don't know what it was. I, I enjoyed it as well. It's a good Muppet movie. Uh, a lot of fun stuff in it. But I don't know what it was about this one that um, it didn't necessarily like. Um, catch fire with me like the other one did Mm -hmm. um i think the opening is strong Mm -hmm. uh with together again again it's a great yeah yeah and i think the ending is great um but i don't know i feel like i i wonder if there might have been like a little bit of a pacing issue with this one because there were a certain points where it did feel a little slow to get to where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it also does feature some, I guess, as heavy as you're going to get with the Muppet movie uh, in the sequences with uh, Kermit losing his memory. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the Muppets were sad, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it almost, like, was over, over. So it's interesting. I wonder if, like, this... It was entertaining. Um, I don't think it was as funny as the other, as the previous two. But I wonder if there was a little bit of a, I don't know, change in approach to, to do a little bit more of, a, I don't know, seriousness mm-hmm. with the movie, considering where it ends up going, with the subject matter and everything. Which is appreciated. I think, I think uh-huh. that like yeah, you know they they took a risk into something to do something different with them, uh, which is, you know, which is big because I feel like the Muppets in general are already a huge risk (laughs) because just the pure concept of them. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. (laughs) It also, and I don't under, I don't know if um, I'm accurate when I say this, but it seems as if this was the last planned movie because it, I would think that this is like a trilogy, and the, at least initially, this is planned yeah. to be three movies. Uh, a little bit of enlightenment. This is not the last performance of uh, Jim Henson as Kermit, but it is the final on-screen um, performance as Kermit on the you know on the big screen because 
This was uh, this was two years before Jim Henson died. This movie, and this was like the final movie with Jim any Jim Henson involvement. Um, so you kind of feel that like sol- you know, solemn, um, uh, you know, tambour with it, you know. And you got um, you got uh, you know, obviously a lot of it is really sad of like Kermit losing his memory and and all that stuff but you know and also like saying goodbye that whole song is just like one of the saddest muppet songs yeah ever yeah you know a lot of people are like you know uh, that's where it gets a lot of people like a lot of people point to this as being like the most emotional Mm -hmm. um muppet movie um like obviously caper has like this uh, notorious uh like the funniest um, the most classic is the Muppet movie, obviously, um, of the of the trilogy. But this really uh, sets itself as like being like the grand finale of everything that you know. Not only um, uh, the Muppets have done, but like honestly, it's like a just a good like hurrah for Jim Henson as well. Um, a little backstory on on where I got with Muppets Take Manhattan. Mm-hmm. First of all, um, I had first exposure of this movie, not with the movie itself, but with a little thing called Muppet Babies. <laughs> and I knew what the Muppet ma- Babies were because I saw them on uh, on ABC uh, when it when it um, not aired, but it was in syndication. Um, you know, what, or, you know, around the time that I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, Muppets!" You know, but they're babies. What the heck? <laughs> what a concept! And I was like, "What the fuck is this from?" It wasn't until I was twelve years old where I watched this movie for the first time, and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, wait a minute! This is where the Muppet Babies came from." You know, and it's a charming little sequence as well. Um just them doing their whole little thing. It's the first time I recognized somebody um, within the Muppet movie because back then I didn't know who like um, Dom DeLuise was. I didn't know who John Cleese was, you know, other than, you know, his voice sounded vaguely familiar and with good reason. He played nearly headless Nick in Harry Potter. But like, I never really knew him until I saw Joan Rivers. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, it's Joan Rivers. (laughs) And I was like, so I I feel you, Moreno, when it was like, oh, I know these people, you know. And it like also Liza Minnelli, her being in the movie. Mm. And it's just like, oh, um, I, you know, I know that. So I definitely feel how you feel when it comes to like I thought I did. anonymous cameos that you see in you know good old fashioned Muppet fashion I guess. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah. Um I did not watch it recently because I wanted to see how like my memory cuz like I still have memories of like Muppets Take Manhattan and like the big old f- wedding finale which yeah. is great. Um but um but I, I, it's been a longer time since I seen Caper, so I wanted to check that out, um, and just like see what I remember in conversations with, uh, with you guys. So, um, yeah. And then we also uh, get Sesame Street people in this one. Yeah, uh, and it's like incredible. Like it's like one of the last times you see like this collaboration mm-hmm. to this scale, you know, and like. Again, it feels like a grand like finale finale on um on uh Jim Henson's career, you know, because of that. I mean, yeah, uh, in development around the time he was working on two projects, um Dark Crystal and um and Labyrinth. He was working on those two um alongside with this one. So, he was a busy man in his final final outing, you know, yeah. in his final um final years alive. Uh but God damn! If this feels like a finale to end all finales of his, like what he is and what he does, you know, in terms of like making stories and you know the tone of the film definitely reflects that because like everybody's like, oh, when is Miss Piggy gonna get married with Kermit? And you know, you know, uh, how are you know the Sesame Street character is gonna be you know involved and just like everybody has been waiting for that finale of like where. um and 
this is where you have that. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, like two years after that, you know, like again, he was Jim Henson was really busy just going on Muppet history. He was having deals with Michael Eisner to possibly like, hey, can you continue on the Muppet legacy over at the House of Mouse um, and and do all that? And they were also in production with uh, Muppet. I mean, this dude was fucking busy. Like, talk about like, like we talked about like how like a couple of uh, a couple of months ago, how like Chadwick Boseman was really busy, yeah. you know, during the, the last time, of, you know, the last days of his life. Jim Henson like he was the same he was just constantly go 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 trying to like make sure that all these projects were you know going off he was doing muppet vision you know and he was doing all these other scenarios as well uh he was even trying to do another concept of like uh another iteration of the muppet show uh you know and it, like this guy kept it kept it busy and you you definitely feel that. I think that's why, like, it like the tone doesn't feel consistent throughout the whole entire movie. Uh, not the tone, the pacing, mm-hmm. and maybe some writing issues because, like, Jim Henson's whole entire heart was not in this movie as much yeah. as the other ones. Um, like Muppets was on the rise when Caper came out, and so you definitely feel that the that it had that kind of gravitas Mm -hmm. not to sound pretentious (laughs) but uh that's where you have it you know i don't know how do you guys feel about that yeah 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 Yeah, more or less about the same about what you said um it's a lot of things that were happening and i'm sure that's why you know frank oz directed this movie and not jim henson he was just so busy um but it also was a very fitting finale, I would think, um, especially with you know the culmination of the wedding with Piggy and with Kermit, um, which was a big like big number with just about every every freaking Muppet um, that ever existed. It seems like even those on Sesame Street. Uh, I didn't see Elmo. Was Elmo there? No, he, he Elmo did not um, like. F- fully exist yet as a Sesame Street character. Because uh Elmo Elmo's first appearance was actually in the movie Follow That Bird. And he was just a bystanding um monster. Elmo really? Elmo is a is a relatively new character. Huh. He, he I had no remember idea. The Elmo movie. That was a really sad ass movie. There was an Elmo movie <laughs> where he loses his yeah, blanket. Elmo. Holy shit, dude! I would I cried my heart out. <laughs> Elmo in Grouchland. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, Elmo is a relatively new character. I mean, he didn't like fully become a staple of Sesame Street character until the mid '90s. You know. And even then, he was sparsely used, and like it wasn't until like we were growing up, yeah. What he he was? Nah. Yeah. He's like one of the things I remember a lot when I was little. Oh. Yeah, because like when Sesame Street was Sesame Street still airs to this day, and like new episodes would feature Elmo, and they were like, "Hey, this uh, this character is really thing. Let's make him a new segment called Elmo's World." And, like, that's where we have our, you know, primary memories of Elmo, Mm -hmm. you know? And he kind of, like, took off in a big way. Like, he was not just, like... (laughs) Elmo and Blue's Clues were, like, huge. Well, yeah, it just seemed like, you know, Elmo is the main Sesame Street character. At least that's from what I can recall. Uh... I beg to differ. It's Big Bird. <laughs> you don't, don't get fucking offended here. I'm just like, I'm no, saying from my recollection, like, I always just like, do it. scoff, like. <laughs> <laughs> I beg to differ. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm a big fan of Elmo as well. Um, But like, uh, like the face of Sesame Street has always been Big Bird. It wasn't until like, yeah, Big Bird. It wasn't until Elmo took off and then they were like capitalizing on the the 
the red thing. But yeah, it was always Big Bird. Big Bird was the big character at the time, you know. Um, so. Oh, and Barney Muppets. was big too in my house. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bar- no, no, Barney's no, no, no. definitely Just big. Kidding. Well, yeah, Barney was a big thing, but for me, it was um, Molly and the Big Comfy Couch. <gasps> I love, uh, I love the Big Comfy Couch. You know, that's a Canadian show. It is. Yeah. Oh my god, it's... that's that's like the one thing that my dad remembers me watching a lot when I was little. Luna and, and Molly, I would, I would the do clown the and her clock dolly. Thing. The clockworks, uh, the clock, clock rug stretch. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you just tapped into like a deep crevice <laughs> of my memory. Like that. Holy shit. Yeah. Man, that's the do it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good thing. Oh, um, recently on um, with, uh, you know, remember a couple of years back, there was a big old clown scare. Yeah. Um, the Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Alexis in the news, a bunch you didn't of know like, this? clowns. Oh, when there was a whole bunch of clowns happened, like appearing out yeah. of nowhere. Dude, going home because at this time I was already living in San Diego. I was sc- and I was living in my aunt's house, and I would had to park like far away, like on the street. Oh my god, that was so scary. <laughs> I hated every moment of that era. I don't know who came oh, up with it, but <laughs> it was the worst. And it was. It was even worse because the movie It came out. <laughs> <laughs> so it like doubled down on the clown horror. Um but anyway, um the actress, the original actress, um Allison Court, I think, who played uh Lunette the clown, um uh, appeared on a uh, on a Canadian news network. It's like the Canadian CNN at the time, uh-huh. and she appeared in full costume as Lunette saying that you shouldn't be scared of clowns and oh. Did Wait, I think stuff. I remember this. I kind of remember this. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, wait, in her third season, like, sorry, I, w- I went into like a big old research phase about big, uh, bear, uh, uh, the big comfy couch. So, uh, there was a time where, um, in the third season before. Allison Court left the uh, left the show uh, in the in the fourth season mm-hmm. is that she was big and pregnant, so you saw a lot of close up shots of oh. uh, of her, and they kind of like when they did the clockwork stretch, mm-hmm. they just reused old footage that they used, um, just to hide the fact that she's you know pregnant. she's preggies, yeah. <laughs> um, so we have that. Big comfy couch. Go watch it. It's uh, there's full episodes on YouTube if you want to watch it. So uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, back to Muppets. Um, anything else? I, I honestly I have nothing to say about Muppets Take Manhattan other than what I just yeah. said. How it's a big. I agree. Yeah. Um. Anyway, next month is going to be um, a big comfy couch month. Oh on, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking we're gonna, about? <laughs> we're going to review every single episode of uh, Big Comfy Couch. And then following along, we're going to do uh, Bear in the Big Blue House month. I would rather do that, but it's fine. <laughs> um, which movies are up next? The Muppets and Muppets Most Wanted. 2011, okay. The Muppets, and then 2014, Muppets Most Wanted. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a sequel. <laughs> um, I just heard like I w- I was listening to my Disney Jams playlist thing, um, and that song the song I'm number one, and you're number two. The like it's just such a catchy number, and like new era Muppets is like freaking popping. It should have taken off, honestly. Um, I okay so. Before I watched these movies, I was in the mindset of, like, uh, kind of a mean girl's mindset of stop making fetch happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but insert Muppets. Because <laughs> I, like, I truly just didn't, like, get it. But now after watching these, I agree that this should have taken off. And... I also appreciate the fact that they don't want to let them die, and that's great. 
Yeah, like Muppets Now and um there there's like a Twitter like account for every single Muppet. <laughs> Yeah. As well, like, like yeah. Kermit. Ms. Yeah, Piggy. like I, I like the fact that you know, it obviously like they're not as big and, but they keep trying to bring them back, and I appreciate mm-hmm. the effort. Honestly, like with the with the budget that they have and the format that they could do, um, I honestly like you could revive the Muppet Show back to its original form. Um, and I think that that would tie it up. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, Alexis. Alexis. <laughs> what? You don't agree? No. I was, uh, did I make a face? <laughs> no, yeah, I just I feel your comment being like, yeah, Disney's Plus should do a lot of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. They should oh. do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but they won't. <laughs> like... Okay, first episode. I mean, you clearly have it written. First episode <laughs> hosted by fucking Steve Martin. You know, you could do that shit because I don't know. You have a bunch of like a heavy nostalgic fan base for the Muppets. That shit is profitable. You know, it may not be st- a Star War. It may not <laughs> be a Marvel, but you could still make it work. I don't. I. I. I I don't understand. Also, what do you what are what is the people at Disney Plus doing? Put fucking Muppets and Take Manhattan on Disney Plus. I don't know why it's not. I know there. that's really strange that it's not because everything else is on there, right? Right. Apparently, it's on Showtime. Yeah, that may so be maybe. it. Maybe. Yeah, probably. But yeah, oh, I mean, but did like, did you guys see that they got the rights back? Well, not the rights, but like they are able to continue the Daredevil show. They're not. Wait, wait, was that official? Like they got the rights yeah. back and. Jo- Interesting. I don't know that they will, but the fact that there is a possibility of that happening. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. So we'll see. Spider-Man 3. He needs a lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) And what Marvel character is a lawyer? Who's big and popular. Who lives around the same area that Peter Parker does. Hmm. I wonder who. (laughs) They're not, because <laughs> they'll never like Marvel will never do anything that cool. <laughs> um, yeah, Alexis is Alexis looks like he's just about done and holding his breath, because <laughs> like I'm pretty sure like if we like continue this conversation, he's gonna go on like a ten hour rant on like everything that Disney could do, but just <laughs> won't. <laughs> Because they're freaking creatively bankrupt. I just don't know what there is left to say at this point when it comes to to that. Like it, maybe in one world it could have been done, but it, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to get yourself excited for like something you know it just isn't going to come together. Yeah. Like, like two men and a baby. You know. <laughs> right. What yeah, the we fuck? all wanted that. Oh, you didn't know this? And... Wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you mean the project? Two men and yeah. a... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the most okay. wanted project. <laughs> Turner and Hooch. Okay. Yeah, I I, I know about that. Everybody's yeah, cl- okay. I... Everybody's clowning about the Turner <laughs> and Hooch project. About a remake of planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> oh, God. Sign me up for that one. Holy shit. I thought I thought wow. it was three men and a baby, not two men and a baby. I'm thinking I'm probably thinking of, you see, this is where I just don't give a shit. I'm thinking of two and a half men. <laughs> Which honestly, same fucking title. <laughs> what else? What else do we have that to look forward to in the great Disney of Plus? The live action stick. Aren't they doing a Percy Jackson TV show? Oh, I'm excited about that one. I just started reading the book, so. 
Has it been like greenlit though? Yeah, they already they finished like what they're gonna do. I think right now they're um like starting to like find the cast and Mm -hmm. whatnot. Um I mean I think that is what I'm most excited for. (laughs) Hopefully it comes out the way that I think it is. And um also for the It's not gonna go the way you think. uh The Disney After Dark stuff. I mean, what the fuck? The (laughs) uh, Kingdom Keeper. Sorry. It's one of the books. That's what it's called. Uh, The Kingdom Keeper series. uh, I'm excited for that. But I don't know. I I mean, I'm on the same boat. I think that they should do a lot of things that they haven't. (laughs) So. Bring back the Muppet Show. How fucking hard is it to bring back the Muppet Show? None of this Muppets Now thing, which I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of people... There's, like... If you thought that the previous movies were freaking, like, mixed, this one right here takes the cake. Because a lot of people are like, it's Muppets doing Muppetly things, but, like, it has no... It has no focus, unlike if you were to have a Muppet Show. It would have, like, some sort of semblance of focus. I don't know. You could do a lot of things, but again, Disney just, it's like Shia LaBeouf and he's just like, it's right there. Just do it. You have all that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, I feel like we always end. I think we like talked about this last time too. You did? We did? I think so. Oh yeah. Yeah. We talked about the show. Oh my God. (laughs) This is just going to be the ending of <laughs> all three of these. Four. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I'm done. How about you guys? Do you, you have any other final thoughts before we close off this episode? They're fun movies. Go watch them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Really fun. Anyway. Did you like what you heard here? And if you did, you can check us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. <laughs> oh, my <Sorry>. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Damn. <laughs> um, Was, did that come out of nowhere? Or? It came out of nowhere. Like, I felt it for the last, like, ten minutes. Oh, God. <laughs> And then it finally came out Damn at it. the opportune moment. Oh my god! Um, but anyway, let's take that from the top, shall we? <clears throat> did you like what you heard here? And if you did, you could check us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. Whether it be <laughs> Stitcher, whether it be Apple, whether it be I don't because Google Podcasts like the por- the portal is like shut down right now. Um. <laughs> You should know better than to say Google, Kyle. In your, <laughs> yeah. Because I have a um a assistant of some sort. Um, I'm, I dare not say the G word. <laughs> God, no, I'm kidding. Um, but I think that uh, uh <laughs> a a podcast. <laughs> um i yeah so the portal (laughs) is gone so uh so i i I hear whispers news from the underground that um that youtube is going to integrate podcasts um on youtube music so i'm gonna whenever that happens it'll be there uh it's on spotify just look up the fantasy fair and it'll, and it'll be there uh so yeah without further ado next time is a uh, muppets movie and uh uh the muppets and muppets uh most wanted so take a look we're gonna do the same thing that we did in this episode and just combine the two movies because like god damn it like we've been milking this shit for like ever <laughs> um uh not to the fault of our own but it's just things happen and life gets in the way and yada 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 all that bullshit so without further ado i'm kyle lira and with me is alexis moreno and alexis soto and as always stay magical everyone waka waka waka